Hey everybody, it's Mike. I'm back again with another Visionary Planner student story, and I have the lovely Laura Lummer with us. Hello. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Now, Laura was one of our first students way back. I, that must have been 2016, 2017. Yeah, I think 2017. Yeah. Visionary OG. Planner OG right here. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So let's, let's get in the DeLorean and go back in time. Before you started working with us, what was the motivation to take your business online? Freedom was a big part of that motivation. Reaching a bigger audience of people, not having overhead, you know, and being able to work from anywhere doing something that I love to do. That was really important. Okay. And can you tell the good people at home what you do? What's your niche? I am a breast cancer recovery coach. So I work with women who have completed treatment for breast cancer, and I help them to learn how to recreate their lives after breast cancer and overcome that trauma and their new vision of the way they want to live. Which I love. I love your business because you, you truly make an impact. Thank you. I love it too so much. Yeah. Before you started working with us and as you were trying to get online, what was that like for you? It was very confusing. It was very overwhelming. There are so many tools and people say you have to have this software and this app and these websites. And I felt like I had money going out in every direction without having a clear sense of direction for myself. I felt very scattered. And that sense of overwhelm oftentimes led me to stop pushing forward with my business because I would just not be sure of what I should do. You know, should I have this mail delivery service and this lead paying <laughs> service? And the, you know, you get all caught up in these things. And they're like, oh my God, I'm spending hundreds of dollars a month and I'm not bringing anything in. And I don't know what in the heck I'm doing. So yeah, it was very confusing. Okay. What other things were you trying before you started with us? I was listening to podcasts of people who were trying to tell you, you know, how to do an online business. I did have another coach and she had set up her courses in Facebook. So kind of having like a Facebook group, but people were paying for a course in that. And it really wasn't the vision that I had yeah. or what I wanted to do. I wanted it to be something that was very professional. I wanted it to be easily accessible, to be able to scale it and to just have a really nice elegance to it as well. I didn't want to feel like a mom and pop person on Facebook. I wanted to feel like a professional business person. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Now, how did you find us? Oh, I went to the Idea World Fitness Convention and I was at this point in my journey and going to conferences and looking for people that had successful online businesses to try to understand how do you do this? How do you make it happen? It just really spoke to me. You know, I could look at my current website I had at that time and realize there was nothing engaging about it. And, and even though I knew that, I didn't know why, right? I knew it wasn't what I wanted, but I didn't know how to get it to be what I wanted it to be. So there was this gap. And so I called him back and said, how do I do it? Yeah, let me in. Awesome. Now, what was the big draw? The big draw was knowing there was a plan. The vision that I saw that was presented to me aligned with where I wanted to go. I wanted my website to be professional. I wanted people to be able to get to know me. I wanted my website to be a welcome mat rather than a barrier. Yeah. Right. Because a website, if you don't have something that makes people want to get to know you more and keep going through that website, then it's just kind of a, a wall. It's like just a, a sign, you know, really yeah. doesn't mean anything. So I loved that there was that vision and that there was a path to it. It wasn't just like, let's figure it out each call as we go. What's next? It was like, here's a plan. And if you follow this plan, you're going to end up here. And that's what I wanted. I love it. I love it. I remember that first plan. It took me like three years. And it's so, uh, <laughs> and it was really cool too. And I was like, wow, look at everything's been thought out here. There's all these <laughs> Mike's <a> big nerd. <laughs> Since you work with us, what results have you gotten? Well, I got my business up and running. I got my website up and running. But more than that is I got a course. I got a membership. You know, I understood how to take all the ideas that I had and that I wanted to get out into the world, how to take my message and format it into a system that people could understand, that I could talk about. And it, it was 
I could brand it. I could be marketable. And I wasn't constantly looking for ways to get people to understand what I do or get people to understand why they should work with me. You know, you guys at the Visionary Planner just really helped me to understand, take all these ideas and now keep refining them and work them into a way that you can talk about them, make them a system, right? Have a process for people. Just like I just talked to you, what sold me to come to Visionary Planner was there was a process for me when you guys talked about it, it made sense to me. I could see the plan. That's what I wanted for my people. And that's what you guys helped me to do. You helped me to take all of these ideas and put them into an actual business, a marketable plan, a marketable course, and something I could sell to people. Excellent. Yeah. And it's been very successful and continues to grow. How, how long did it take you to get ROI from what you invested? Oh my gosh, within that first year, definitely within that first year. Yeah, I more than tripled what I invested in Visionary Planner in the first year of my business and even in the pandemic, you know? So I had launched my first course just mid 2019, like May of 2019. And I was refining that and, you know, getting lots of feedback and I had kind of recreated it, made it more robust. So excited. I was launching. I had a date. I had webinars and it was going to go off on March. It was March 9th was the opening day and of 2020. Not only did it go fabulously and that I made my goals for selling that course, my original plan was to do that. It's a 10 week course to do that 10 week coaching course two times during the year. Instead, I did it four times because people kept coming and asking for it. And in addition to that, people that finished it said, how do I continue to work with you? And so I added on a membership on the back end. So once they complete my course, they can move into my membership. So even in what people consider this big economic crisis, what was so wonderful about having an online business is that you could still make it work. You know, you can't get shut down. It was still there for me and it was great and it grew, you know? Now, how does that feel to have that machine working for you? Oh, it's awesome. It feels like there's so much confidence because I feel like no matter what happens or where I have to pivot in my business, I get it now. Like I know I can do it. No matter what happens out in the world, no matter what happens in my life circumstances, I can tweak it because I understand the system now. And so I can build, I can grow, I can rebuild. So it's a great feeling of, Looking back, you know, I can sit here now in the beginning of 2021 and I can look back at 2017 and I hear new business people talk all the time where they might say, oh, I don't even have a Facebook page or I don't have an email list. And, and they forget nobody did. Like I didn't, you know, I started a podcast, you know, during that whole process of building my business. And I can remember hitting the publish button, terrified, terrified <laughs> that was someone going to download it? And then if they did, were they going to think it was horrible? You know, oh my God, what's going to happen? And now I have over a hundred thousand downloads of that podcast and it's grown so much. And I have all of these members and students and it just started from sitting in that conference and seeing that there was a, a path to get there and then just one step at a time, doing the work, see what works, what doesn't, and fix it, keep going, keep going, keep going. Just stay steady and keep walking the path and it just grows, it happens, yeah. I love to hear that. Awesome feeling. Now let's talk about another awesome feeling. Okay. You share some inspirational stories of how your system and you as a coach have transformed lives. Oh my God, yes, I may be in tears doing this, but absolutely. So, you know, when I first started, and I think this happens with a lot of new people, is you feel like you have something important to put out there, but then you judge and doubt yourself. Yeah. And so you put your message out a little bit at a time, kind of tentatively, right? And then what I realized is, wow, people were signing up for my lead magnet. You know, they were downloading, they were interested in this message I had to put out. And then I realized, well, I have a responsibility to these people now. If they came and downloaded what I put out, that means that's saying to me, hey, I need your help. Whatever it is you're offering, I need that right now. And then I looked at it and went, oh, I have a responsibility to continue to serve these people now. So as I would move forward, I would start to get Facebook messages and emails from people who said, oh, I saw this or I downloaded this from you and it just spoke to me. This is exactly what I needed to, to move on, right? This is exactly what I needed to get back to 
my life and to stop feeling so traumatic. It is so transformative. And these women are so just happy in their lives. You know, they've gone from coming through a traumatic, just life-changing experience of breast cancer and coming out on the other end, feeling very confused, very frightened, very unsure of how to even move forward with life. And now I see these confident women who are asking me, how do I keep pursuing my dreams, who have a completely different process of thinking about themselves and looking at themselves. And I'll tell you this last Christmas, actually it was before Christmas, I got on my birthday a video from one of my members and her husband and her daughter. And it was just a video of everyone in her family thanking me for how much she had changed and transformed and improved and how much happier their whole life was because she'd been a part of my programs. Wow. And now as I've grown so much, I hear that all the time. And I get so many messages from people who say I'm so inspired. And in the particular niche that I work in, in working with breast cancer survivors, there's a lot of negativity in that niche where people might come together in groups and they're really just kind of complaining about what the medications did and the treatment. And so what I love is when I hear messages and I get posts from people who say, I was so happy to find you because I needed inspiration and positivity to move forward in my life and how much that has helped them. So I look now and I have people call me and say, I don't know if my mom would agree, but like, you're an angel. You're an angel that came into my life. And now I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm so much more happy and fulfilled. And it really helps you realize, man, when there's that calling inside of you and you know, you have a message to get out into the world, there's a reason for that. And so find a way to get that message out into the world because it's there to change people's lives. Yeah. It's awesome. Just like you've changed my life with your message and your system, right? It's all about, yeah, taking your passion and your heart and putting it out there if people need it. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing that. That's really powerful. And I, I hope everybody listening resonates with that. Well, let's just spill the myth. Was it easy to go through VP and get your business launched? No, it wasn't easy because I had to work through a lot of my own self-limiting thoughts, mm -hmm. right? And that would include, I had a full-time job when I decided I wanted to do this business. So a lot of times people say, oh, but I have to do this instead, right? And we think of excuses to keep us from moving forward because we have self-doubt, because like, ah, maybe no one will buy it. And it makes sense to say, well, I won't go do that course because my job is too busy, but yeah. it's really just an excuse. And you have to work through those excuses and those self-limiting beliefs and thoughts. And then you have to invest the time. You have to invest the time, you have to invest the money. You can't look at it as a hobby because it's online. I mean, more and more as there are more robust online businesses, hopefully it's more realistic, but I think people don't really grasp, and I don't think I did for a while, really grasp the concept like, this is a business. Yeah. I'm starting a business and I need to run this as a business. It's not my side gig. And some people may just want a side gig, that's cool. I wanted a business. So yeah, you've got to be consistent. You've got to treat it like a business and and that means everything. It means the time blocking for whatever has to happen, staying on schedule, managing the finances around it. It's a huge learning process. And you may not have to drive to business and have a brick and mortar place that you're paying rent on, but do you have a business and you have to approach it like that? Mm -hmm. So when the first time you launched, was it like perfect and wonderful? And you know, can you talk about that? It was terrifying. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't perfect and wonderful. And in fact, the first time I launched, my whole course wasn't even ready. It had taken me so much time, you know, to do all these videos the way that I wanted. Like I started off one way, right, in uh, 2019, learned, surveyed my people, asked lots of questions. And you've got to be willing to ask those questions. You have to be willing to say what is working for you and what isn't and I'm here to serve you, let's do this together. So when I went back and I kind of rewrote and, and made it more robust and got an idea of how much coaching for me they wanted in it, and I started doing these videos and I thought, okay, this is taking too long. If I don't launch this thing now, I'm not gonna make my deadline and you know what, I'm just gonna do it. I've got the first two weeks of 10 weeks done solid 
and that was it. I had two weeks <laughs> and I launched it. And off of that first launch, I made a little over $10,000 on that first launch. I had to deliver. Yeah. You know? I like, Andrea, yeah. yeah. In me. I got to deliver. And I knew what I wanted to do, but it just wasn't all ready yet, you know, and that was okay. So I had during that first launch, many one, 2 a.m night <laughs> stay up getting this stuff done getting it plugged in getting the worksheets you know edited and and it was a lot of work it was a lot of work but that was the group who said we need more what else do you have for us now what else can we move on to and so on the fly right there i said okay well um here, how about this? I'll call it this. And, and here's how much you, you can join it for. And I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I've got nothing, <laughs> nothing. And that weekend I was like, okay, let me figure out what I'm going to do for them next week. You know? And it just went like that until I figured out after a couple of months, how to do the membership side of it after the course. And that was going back and tweaking what they told me about the 10 week course. Cause I was getting ready to launch it again. You know? So it's just a matter of, um, do it, do it scared, do it halfway, you know, but deliver, like be there. You know, I knew I wanted to deliver that value. I truly looked at it like they invested in me. They were investing in me and I needed to give them everything that they came to me for. And I did. Now, how does life look like for you now that you have this automated fulfillment for, for people? You know, sometimes I stop and I kind of look and I go, don't I, shouldn't I be doing something? Like, <laughs> I'm feeling guilty here. Yeah. Working my ass off on right now, <laughs> you know, and even the second time around was really cool because I didn't have any 1 a.m. You know, nights, 2 a.m. nights. I went, oh, you know, it's together. Like I built it and I'll continue to make improvements as I see them or I, you know, get great feedback on them. But yeah, for the whole year of 2020, it just ran. And each time that it ran, it got easier and easier. And I remember one weekend, because I work from 6 a.m. till whatever to get stuff done Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And this one weekend, I was out with my husband and I said, I finally feel it. I'm finally feeling that there's freedom in this business, right? I'm starting to understand what happens now when you have an online business and you get the course ready, like you have a process and you start to automate that process and it's there, like it's there and it's working and I'm having a margarita and that's good. <laughs> there, yeah. I have money in the bank. The business is paying for itself. I've got people in my courses and I'm out having a margarita. Cool. <laughs> I love that. I'm ready to go out and have a margarita. There's no Mexican restaurants here in Slovenia. So it's very, well, there, there are, there are, but they're, they, they, they have normal Slovene food and they just put nacho cheese from a can on it. They're like, it's Mexican. I'm like, <laughs> that would never fly in Southern California. Oh no, no. Now, what if anything do you feel could have been changed about the VP process? Well, you know, as we said in the beginning, I was OG and honestly, I think that that part of me seeing you guys listen and respond to your people, you know, to your clients and hearing what we said or seeing where we got confused or seeing where we were overwhelmed, you continue to refine that message. So it was more and more clear along the way. So I don't think anything could have been or would I have wanted it to be different because that taught me that I could do that too. I didn't have to be perfect. It didn't have to be flawless. I just had to be transparent, which I was, and said to my people, listen, this is what I think you need to fix this problem. But if I'm wrong, tell me as we go and I'll figure it out for you. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I had one of my very first members came back to me and she shared with me a story. She's a speech and language therapist at uh, Duke University Hospital in North Carolina. And she leads a team of speech language therapists. And she said, you know, after going through cancer and having, she really struggled with chemo brain and she works in this field that's all about the brain, right? And she said, I had so many insecurities and I would tell myself, my staff must think this of me, must think that of me because she didn't feel like she was sharp and on it after chemo. And she says, but because you showed me that you could ask what's wrong, that you could come to people you don't even know and say, tell me how I could do this better. 
She said, I went to work and I sat down with my team and I said, how can I support you guys better? What am I not doing that you need? And she says, and before that in my life, it would have never even occurred to me that that's something that could have been done. Wow. You know, so I think that it's really important for us to show, hey, nobody's perfect. Like nobody starts off as Rachel Hollis 10 years into her business, right? That's not where we start. I don't even go back and listen to my first podcast because God only knows, I don't even want to know what I said, right? <laughs> You're like, and you figure out as you go, like how to even just be authentic. Yeah. You know, you figure out how to be yourself because you go in thinking, okay, this is what they want to want to hear. And then you say, well, well, this is what I want to say. And then you just kind of roll with it and you find yourself and you just kind of find your flow. Is it fair to say like, you're not going to get to the top of the mountain until you start taking the steps? Yeah. You got to start at the bottom. You got to acclimate yourself to the thin air as you go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you take your time. And that's a thing. And I do think that I had some of that mentality, like I'm going to do this and I'm going to launch this and I'm going to make $150,000. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those are the stories you hear of the one, that, oh, this girl did her first launch and she made $80,000. Right. And that's great. And some people do. And that's awesome. But for reality's sake, it is a business and business takes time and attention. You know, fortunately in this kind of business you have, in an online business, you have the space to evolve, right? If you open a brick and mortar store and you make a promise and you've got a store and it's built out and it's set up, you're locked in, right? In this kind of a business, you can flow with your business and you can grow with your business without having to, you know, shut it down and remodel the whole thing. Okay. I got a great question for you. Yeah. Can you talk about the overhead of running a coaching, consulting kind of business online? Yeah, absolutely. What I have learned is simplify, mm -hmm. find the tools that work for you and stop running after shiny objects because there does not have to be a lot of overhead. And yet there are a lot of opportunities to create more overhead for yourself. And I think with you go in and you get the basics, that's all you have to do is get the basics. You get your website, you know, you have your mail delivery or what are we calling that? I don't know. Active campaign. Yeah. And you know, if your audience is on Facebook, which most are, you know, get yourself set up properly on Facebook, but manage your money, you know, really look at it and manage that overhead. I remember looking at it one time and saying to myself, you know what? this is a hobby. If I'm taking money out of my personal account to pay for MailChimp or whatever I'm using, then I'm letting myself down. Like my business is not a business, not paying for itself. I'm not even looking at it like that. Right. And so I set up the bank account just for the business and the credit card just for the business and everything was billed to the business because that helped me see, am I building a business? You know, is this business paying for itself? And if not, what do I have to do to get it to pay for itself? How many more clients do I need to get? What do I need to charge more for my course? Just really being aware of and connected to your money, I think, in your business is super important because I heard this phrase one time, somebody says, it's a jobby. Like it's really a hobby because you're not running it like a business, but you say it's a job, it's a jobby. <laughs> You know, so you got to make a decision up front. If you want it to be a business, then no, a business has overhead. And how are you going to get enough people in to cover that overhead so you can keep building that business? What would you, if you, if you don't mind saying, what would you estimate is the base overhead, like with Kajabi and active campaign or MailChimp, whatever you're using? Oh my gosh. So oh, right now, work. because I do use Kajabi and I've migrated everything to Kajabi. So yeah. I had got done with lead pages. I just do all my email. I do everything out of Kajabi. What's the really expensive price tag for Kajabi to run your entire business? How much is it costing you? $90 a month. What? How much would a brick and mortar be? Oh my God. In Orange County? Yeah. In Orange County, we're like seven grand a month, right? Just, just. Oh, oh, at least, at least just to have office space. Yeah. And now I have Libsyn from my podcast. So that's another $30, right? Yeah, it's really just a couple of hundred dollars is all that I pay. 
That's incredible. Yeah. A business model out there. And I have a VA, you know, and um, which is wonderful. And she helps to post all the podcasts and stuff. So, and I was paying a lot more, but that's because I was chasing shiny objects. You know, uh, whatever course came up or whatever tool came up and let's try this. And is this better? And then I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> you're chasing so many things that you're not concentrating on building a business. Yeah. I call it the internet marketing rabbit hole. You just fall in. Oh, I need this new thing and this new thing. And, and you know, before you know it, you're, you're, you're out. Oh, easy. Yeah. I love Jobby though. So how might you recommend Visionary Planner to others? I tell anyone who asks and is interested in starting their own business. Or even if I see someone who's, you know, struggling to figure out what it is they want to do, but they love music and want to teach somebody or whatever. And I would say, go do the Visionary Planner because you need a process. You need to rein in all those thoughts in the very beginning. You're all over the place. And like we just talked about, there's everybody reaching out, do this, do this, do this, follow me, follow me. And it's so important to have a step-by-step -step plan. And when I say that, it doesn't mean step-by-step, -step, like everybody's business is gonna look the same. It's a step-by-step -step plan that takes care of the tangibles helps you take your ideas and put them into a system that's sellable, but it fits you and who you want to be, right? So you fill in those boxes a little bit differently for each entrepreneur. But I think having that support and having that system, but also having the team a visionary planner because you guys are the bomb. I mean, the creativity, the experience, the vision, the feedback. And I can remember in the very beginning, just sitting there, just like amazed and like, oh, how did you come up with that? You know, so quickly, how did you come up with that little phrase that would help market something? But you guys have all that experience and you've worked with such a wide range of entrepreneurs and businesses. If there's one cost for the program and that's like, here's your stuff that you get, but the added value of the vision and the knowledge and the experience, that's just, it's priceless. And you guys are such an amazing team. I recommend it to everybody. How would you describe it? I have a hard time describing it because I'm so close to the darn thing. So in your own words, what the heck is VP? I would describe Visionary Planner as a coaching group, or you could call it a mastermind. I think it's more than a mastermind. I mean, it is a, a business process that is enhanced by coaching and support to create your version of an online business, you know, so it takes care of the tangibles. It takes care of, this is the step-by-step -step technology you need to know, but this is the way you got to put together and communicate your idea and your product. So people understand it and want to come and work with you. So it's the whole package of the coaching and the technology that you need to start an online business. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about the support we have? <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the support is phenomenal. Your team is phenomenal. And I'm always fascinated when I work with you guys on the vision. I mean, you call it the visionary planner, so that sounds redundant, but it truly is like the vision. And, you know, if I get stuck on something or I was stuck on something or couldn't see it, you know, working with Barbara, doing weekend workshops where you bring whatever piece of your business you're working on and Barbara looks at it and she's like, okay, well, you could try this. Or if you put that out there, just so you know, this is how people respond to those kind of things. And this might work a little better. And I, oh yeah, of course that was so easy. It's so important. The value of the coaching is something that I could never overvalue, overestimate, um, overemphasize because we don't see what we don't see. We don't know what we don't know. And having you guys on the other end to look at what we're trying to create and say, okay, I see where you're going, but here's what actually works, mm -hmm. you know, and here's the way that people see it or will respond to it. And it is just so it's inspiring. And it's also, I think it just opens a bigger vision, you know, because again, as the individual and the person trying to build something, I think you can think small, you can try to stay small, right? But when you present that to a coach, to the team at the Visionary Planner, and they're like, okay, here's how this gets bigger. Here's how this gets out there. And you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So yeah, just working with the team is one of the most inspiring experiences ever, ever.
Like you guys are just on fire all the time. I've never asked a question and had somebody go, hmm, let me get back to you on that. They're like, oh, sure. <laughs> well, sometimes we do say, why don't you just Google that? Right? That's a simple question. You can just Google that. Oh yeah, the simple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we do get some people that are like, how, how do I reset my password? They're like, just Google it. Google. Yeah, and that's the thing too. You are the business owner and you know me like the person going to visionary planner you are the business owner and you're coming and say i want to set up my business this is my consultancy firm how do i build it what should my business look like and then you're the marketing firm visionary Planner. okay how do i market it what are great ideas but as the business owner you're selling yourself so you have to be able to take that road map but make it take you where you want to go you know you've got to put yourself into it i love that all right as we wrap this up I'd like to know, do you have any last words of inspiration for people who are nervous to start an online business or they're on the fence about VP? Yeah, do it nervous, do it scared, make the investment in yourself because time will go by and you'll still be sitting there wondering what you could have done. <laughs> or you can go do it and you'll grow with it. You'll grow as a human being, you'll grow as a business person and you will have more support than you even think you know you need going along the way and if it's something that you think you want to do starting your own business then just freaking do it and do it scared do it worried just do it you know figure it out and start putting it out in the world because again if you have that thing on your heart like i did on mine that that says to me there's somebody out there in the world that needs you yeah. you know you have what will solve their problem so get it out there you know, make a contribution back to the world. I love that. Now, where can people find you? People can find me at the breast cancer recovery You can yeah. find my podcast, the breast cancer recovery coach on anywhere you listen to podcasts. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Laura and uh, stay in touch. Keep me uh, updated about your, your success. I certainly will. You know that. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. Bye. Bye.